Let's play a game. Can you think of a single mainstream role model for young men in 2022? In fact, can you think of a single mainstream role model for adult men in 2022? Honestly, I can't. Most reasonably well-known internet male thought leaders, such as Jordan Peterson or Joe Rogan, have been attacked and pushed off their own little corner of the internet. And whether or not you even like those folks, you have to agree that there could be a significant social stigma for aligning yourself with them. But there's a huge market for male self-improvement now, to the point where many men are aggressively trying to do anything they can to improve themselves. This is, after all, the source of the improver meme. As an example of this, I spent a single day, just one day, looking at Instagram ads I got. And here's just a fraction of the Manosphere ads I got. The Omega Project, some fitness and motivation stuff from a, quote, special operations forces at the tip of the spear. Above all for men, skincare scientifically proven to make you look and feel younger. Something I don't quite understand called homo immortalis or immortalis. Dressing up your date, a handbook about how to dress to impress. Quote, the unprofessional's guide to surviving the nine to five. Some do that will send you daily texts to, quote, support you on your path to your best self. This weird woman claiming to be a sexpert. Some obtuse stuff I don't quite understand about being against New Year's resolutions. Some weird anti-metaverse ad that actually is trying to convince you to sign up for online fitness courses. This is exactly the kind of environment where charlatans thrive. So let's talk about Jack Murphy. Jack Murphy is the man with the most fake looking beard dye job in the world. Now, Jack Murphy was originally named John Murphy Goldman. He changed his name when joining the Manosphere. I'll get into that in a little bit. Jack's known for writing a 2018 book called, quote, Democrat to Deplorable, Why 9 Million Obama Voters Ditched Democrats and Embraced Donald Trump. Now, Murphy ended up becoming a semi-regular contributor to Tim Pool's Timcast, and he became a fellow at the Claremont Institute. Murphy also founded the Liminal Order, a male self-help group costing $99 a month, or a discounted rate of $790 a year. According to the website, Quote, we're fighting back against lies, Marxism, and the authoritarian jackboot coming down on all of our necks by, quote, building strong families, maintaining personal accountability, and presenting an alternative model to everyone in our lives. Now, Murphy would regularly hold, quote, jacked brunches in D.C., where you could hang out with other Manosphere people and apparently drink mimosas. General admission was $80, with a gold sponsorship costing $300 and a platinum sponsorship costing $2,500. Now, the fun fact, I've actually been invited to these Jack Brunches. This is uh, something that I actually had in my email inbox a very long time ago, and as you'll see in a moment, I'm very glad I never went. So you might be asking yourself, why in the world are we talking about Jack Murphy? Well, it all starts on December 17th, 2021. Murphy was a guest on the podcast You Are Here with Sidney Watson and Elijah Schaefer. Now, during that podcast, a YouTube super chat asked Murphy about the, quote, cuck article. In response, Murphy freaked out and pitched a childlike tantrum. Name, she just goes, Mr. Dukenball said. Could you please clear up the <laughs> cuck article you wrote? I am not going to talk about Again? this. Okay. And basically, you know what? <laughs> f you me? for bringing this up right here and right now. Why, why are you doing this to me? I didn't know that. I didn't know what it was. Well, just use a little bit of common sense. Sorry, apologies. Yeah. Elizabeth, Heartfelt. Elizabeth uh, Harrison says, gonna, uh, gonna miss the show, but have a good break. I-H-T-A-C, what's that? <coughs> it turns out there was, in fact, such an article. It was a 2015 article penned by Murphy, where he detailed his comfort with uh, allowing his life to uh, philander with strangers on Tinder. Why did you post this? Do you, like, do you write this for a f salon? I get, I understand that you <laughs> get off on guys banging your girlfriend. Okay, whatever. Right. Why did you pop? Like, but don't. Who is this for? He's trying to push it like so that it's accepted, so he doesn't have to feel weird about it. That's what it. That's what it is. I mean, he's making a hell of a case to like push it into the mainstream. Like, yeah, this is what everybody should be doing. Some of you are. You gonna guys call are all him. pussies for fucking not doing this. Some. Following this hilarious drama, some internet fruit aficionados and Mongolian basket weaving forums began to investigate. And as a side, I should mention that I owe a lot of my knowledge of this topic to those sources. Jack Murphy was in fact a fake name. His real name is John Murphy Goldman, as I mentioned earlier, suggesting that he possibly changed his name to sound more manly. It's also possible that he changed his name to distance himself from his past life, where he was involved in the DC real estate market and likely lost significant sums in 2008. 
It also turns out that Murphy had an active camming account back in 2019. 69 for 69, guys. 69 for 69. Yes, I have definitely f***ed guys before. Oh. I'm hetero flexible. I should put that in the bio. You should, yeah. Everyone asks. Everyone asks. Yeah. All the guys want to know. We love our guy fans. Uh, I especially love daddy's fans. 69 for 69, guys. Oh. Oh. In the same time. He was talking about masculinity and being a good husband. He was shoving things into himself for perverts on the internet. These videos featured himself in extremely compromising positions. But also his sometimes his wife would participate, although not as much as you would think. It turns out he may have been allegedly fired from the DC Charter School Board after writing an inappropriate 2015 article about, uh, we'll say, women's fantasies. Even further, there are some allegations that he might have been taking a double salary during that time. Those allegations are on page 194 of the book, A Charter School Principal Story, A View from the Inside. Now, some people are claiming that some, he had some sort of conspiratorial involvement in behalf of Tim Pool and other on the right about all being involved in this. There's no evidence of that as far as I'm aware. Now, with all that being said, why is it that some rando who rebranded himself and put on a very, very awkward beard suddenly is able to control a little corner of the manosphere? Well, it should really be no surprise that Murphy was able to gain popularity. He targeted and served underserved community of broadly right-wing men looking for male role models. Murphy's name change from John Goldman to Jack Murphy was no accident. It was a targeted attempt at pandering to a group that he likely perceived as anti-Semitic. Murphy's appearances on Tim Pool, such as presenting his book Democrat to Deplorable, showed that he knew exactly what his target audience was. The liminal order uses language and imagery that's clearly designed to suggest going against the political mainstream, if not outright being a terrorist organization. Even Murphy's book reads as if it was designed to pander to right-wing men. It rambles about women, the culture war, and other hot-button issues. Now, I should say this, we shouldn't make fun of the guys who got tricked by Murphy. Even if you disagree with the politics involved here, Murphy's fans were looking for role models and advice in a world where there isn't a lot of that. As far as we know, none of those fans had any clue that Murphy was a charlatan. Moreover, Murphy appears to have directly targeted those people. In fact, I would personally argue that the liminal order isn't a terrible idea. The liminal order is just a modern version of men's clubs that existed in America for a long time. And those existed for a reason, community support, friendships, and just having something to do. Had the Jack Brunches or Liminal Order been run by someone genuine, I suspect either or both would have done really well. The problem of men lacking role models is only becoming worse as we increasingly push people to stay indoors, interact online, and avoid in-person social interactions. I suspect that decades from now, we're going to discover that a lot of Jack Murphys were around. That is to say, we'll discover that a lot of hypocritical Z-list internet celebrities maintained cargo cults of needy people for their profit. Big picture, Murphy is an important reminder to not define yourself exclusively based on one person. Don't let anyone define who you are, what masculinity means to you or anyone else, or what your political beliefs are. After all, if your entire belief system is governed by one person, if that one person ends up flawed, they almost always do, your belief system will crumble. With all that being said, thank you very much for watching this video. As always, I appreciate your views, I appreciate your attention and your time. I'm still cutting my teeth on the first few videos and I'd appreciate your feedback, both good and bad. If I said something stupid, please don't hesitate to tell me. I'm always interested in your opinion. In particular, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Jack Murphy and his fans. And if you like this kind of content, I would appreciate it immensely if you would share it. It always helps me a lot. Thank you again.